Hey guys, and welcome back to another project video. This project has been close to six weeks in the making and I'm super excited to share with you all. When I arrived back home after UCI kicked us all out due to the virus, I wanted to build a plane that I could fly around the small local fields. I envisioned a motor glider type aircraft that would be able to cruise around at very low speeds and be able to glide quite far. Furthermore, I wanted to experiment around with 3D printing parts for the plane. In particular, I wanted to create a mechanism where both wings could easily attach and detach from the fuselage, thereby decreasing the plane's footprint and making it easier to transport on my backpack. I started off by building both wings out of foam board. Unfortunately, the footage has been lost, but I used the same build method as my larger Anteater Express themed plane, which included cutting out the bottom panel, gluing a small spacer in, and then wrapping another piece of foam over the top of the wing. Then I started on the task of designing the actual interlocking mechanism. I knew that I needed the main spars of the wings to attach to the motor mount, and I also needed a rear spar to prevent any lateral twisting of the wing. For some reason, I was thinking a lot about wood joinery, in, in particular dovetail joints. My final design sort of looks like a dovetail joint, in that the sharp catches interlock with each other. After interlocking, the printed parts are seated and centered by a double ramp in the anchor block, and secured by an upper clamp, which is bolted to the anchor with an M3 bolt and a buried nut. The double ramp also creates the wing dihedral that gives the aircraft stability in the air due to the dihedral effect. Alright, let's get these parts printed on the old TiVo Tornado and remove all the supports. Now it's time to set the nuts in the slots I've designed and screw in both clamps. Now I'm just using a bit of hot glue to fill in the slots in, so the nuts don't move around at all. Here I'm just doing a quick test, just getting a feel for how all the parts go together. Once the anchor is bolted to the carbon tube, I'm just putting some hot glue on the wing inserts and sliding them right on the foam board wings and waiting for the hot glue to set. I'm going to repeat this process for the other wing and make sure everything is squared up and wipe a bit of the extra hot glue away in the process. And there we have it, the wings are successfully completed. Once everything was printed, I shifted my focus to the building of the actual airframe. Here I'm dimensioning and cutting the horizontal stabilizer and making a half cut an inch and a half from the edge of the elevator. I'm carefully cutting a single bevel to act as the hinge for the control surface, and that's our elevator done. I'll repeat this process once more for the vertical stabilizer and the rudder, and join them together with some hot glue and a right angle. Now I'm putting the aileron servos in. I'll firstly outline the shape of the servos and make a cutout into which I can feed the servo cable. I took a bit of fishing with the pencil to get the cable out from the interior of the wing, but I eventually got it. And lastly, I'll secure the servo with a couple small drops of hot glue. I'm cutting a slit for the servo horn to reside in, and using a paper clip as a push rod, which works really well for short distances like these.
I'm then going to do the same thing for the other aileron, the elevator, and the rudder. Just to keep the tail rigid, I'm going to install some reinforcement just to make sure that it stays straight at a perfect right angle and doesn't get bent at all. And now it's time to glue the empennage to the carbon tube. I added a couple popsicle sticks as reinforcements too for good measure. Once the rear two servos are glued on, the rear end is basically complete. So here's a quick overview of all the wiring that's going into this orange RX receiver here. For the throttle channel, we have the ESC, and one up from that is the aileron, which goes to the left aileron, and then elevator goes to elevator, rudder goes to rudder, and then here we have the auxiliary one channel. This goes into the right aileron, that's because we are using flapperons, so the ailerons will double as flaps so I can have a lower stall speed when I lower the flaps. Another thing I forgot to mention, Auxiliary 1 is by default a switch on my Spectrum transmitter, so I actually have to enable flapper on mode on my transmitter for this to work. I practiced assembling the whole plane a couple times just to get the feel for things. Then it was time for the maiden flight. As you just saw, a sudden gust of gravity nearly resulted in an untimely encounter with the ground. Jokes aside, there was a bit of crosswind across the field that I didn't account for in my launch. The winds accentuated some of the less than desirable flight characteristics of the plane, which I'll get into shortly. So, on to how it flies. I'm sure you can tell that the max speed isn't anything special, however, I purposely chose a weaker power setup to save weight. The longer wings coupled with the short distance between the wings and tail created lots of yaw instability. The large ailerons at the ends of the wings also contributed to lots of Dutch roll, which is the yawing effect that arises when only ailerons are used. Therefore, I mostly use rudder to fly with some aileron to counteract rolling. I had a couple minor complaints about my 3D printed parts. One thing that I didn't really consider was slop, or backlash. Due to the small size of the printed parts, my tolerances weren't super great, and the wings as a whole suffered a lot of flex which isn't bad in itself. However, the relatively small size of the wing inserts led to a lot of unwanted yawing in the wing within its mount, despite the ramp side included. And my 3D printer is far from dialed in and capable of printing perfectly every time and even despite a very fine 0.08mm layer height, some parts still didn't turn out how I wanted them to. All this being said, the PLA plastic holds up surprisingly well, and the strength of the spar system is surprisingly robust for its small size, and it survives several crashes without any catastrophic failure. I can tell from the somewhat high stall speed that the plane is a little bit too heavy for what I'd like. I know I'll redesign the fuselage out of foam at some point in the future, and the additional surface area should provide more lift than a carbon rod. Alright, that's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming projects.